Hello guys, Saran here. So I'm back with a new video in the study abroad series. Now I know there has been a delay uh, in this next video in this series, but that was due to because most of our subscribers, as you know, you guys are our, our subscribers. Uh, you were preparing for ES and GATE, so ES exam is now over and uh, then now we can extend our reach and our discussions to more broader areas of studying abroad and what all opportunities are there so till now uh, what i have discussed in the past videos i am going to sum up those things in this video so let us start without any delay so this is an overview of what options and what pathways you have to study abroad okay so the first thing is what are the major destinations we dis already discussed in the very first video you can go to usa you can go to singapore you can go to uk you can go to germany you can go to various places in europe other than germany like france and netherlands so these are all the places and canada as well you can go uh, so <clears throat> these are all the places you can go to study for your masters and phd okay now what are the pathways you can take so there are two pathways first is the gre which most of people who go abroad for their masters they go through gre which is graduate record exam okay it is conducted by ets and the other one is gate graduate aptitude test in engineering which is in some time in 2020 uh, in february the exam will be there so these two are the pathways either you can give the gre exam or you can give the gate exam now the <clears throat> difference between these two is that uh, if you give the gate exam the the options which you have available with you are limited very limited but if you give the gre exam and you go uh, for masters and phd through the gre exam then you have tremendous number of options for your masters and phd now first let us discuss the gate exam because in the previous videos i have discussed this this option in great detail and uh, i guess there is uh, nothing else uh, you can uh, you would want to know that is all the information which is there and you can just go through that those videos and go through that information just go on the websites of the universities if you want something else you uh, to know about uh, the admission process so yeah so gate exam would only let you go to singapore and germany and that too only four universities in the world would take the gate exam uh, outside india yeah only four universities abroad will take would take the gate exam as a selection criteria now what those universities are ntu and nus which are in singapore and technical university munich and rwth aachen which are in germany so i have discussed in detail the application process the research which is going on the uh, scholarships available and uh, the uh, student environment and the study culture there in singapore and germany especially for nus and tu munich and for ntu and rwth aachen it is almost the same so all these things i have already discussed in the past video so let us just recapitulate very fast so what are the requirements for singapore you would need 90% 90% entitle in your gate that is somewhat around the rank of 18000 to 20000 is the minimum cut off for application and you would also require either toefl or ielts six uh, bands in ielts or 85 out of 120 in the toefl ibt internet based test so these two things you would definitely require other than that you would you should have a strong statement of purpose which you would have to submit you should have letter of recommendations from your employer or from your Uh, teachers who taught you in the bachelor's degree and you should have a good cv curriculum vitae uh, now this resume we also call it you should have a good cv if you have work experience then it will count if you have done projects then also it will count so you should understand that 
the uh, selection process in these universities outside India is a more holistic process. They see your overall profile and they give you a weightage and points for specific things which you have in your profile. So it is not that if you lag in some, uh, some place, so uh, you can cover that up in some other part of your profile it is not that if you lag in some place then you would then you would definitely get rejected it is not like that okay so this is a holistic process of application and these things are the main things which you would require if you want to apply to Singapore okay and other than that obviously you would require your degree certificate and your transcripts and all those things are just uh, formality uh, you can say okay then what are the requirements for Germany now there is a bit of twist when it when it comes to German universities there are two types of programs which are being taught in German universities now the masters and the PhD are available as an English taught course in which the classes the lectures and the books and the study material will be in English and the other one is uh, which is available is the German taught course now what is the difference so the requirements which you would have to show uh, to get into a German university is uh, that is TU Munich and RWTH Aachen because those are the two which accept gate so if you want to get into those universities then in an English taught course then you would have to show some more requirements like you would have to show a uh, minimum 90 percentile in gate and you have to uh, take TOEFL or IELTS exam you should also have German language proficiency of B1 or B2 you should have an uh, have a strong SOP you should have LORs you, you should have a good CV so all these things are required if you want to get an admission into the English taught program at that German university which is TU Munich and RWTH Aachen but if you want to go to the German taught course then you wouldn't need any TOEFL or GATE or GRE you would just need the German proficiency of C2 level that's all and a strong SOP is obviously required letter of recommendations and curriculum so these uh, the, the requirements they change if you uh, study in German language but if you study in English language that then those requirements are different so this you should keep in mind while applying to Germany and have already discussed what all research which is going on there and professors who are working in various fields in various departments and the application procedure the scholarships and funding opportunities and these things I've already discussed in the past videos all those uh, the links to those videos will be given in the description so please check them out okay so and one more thing uh, Germany is one of the cheapest countries when it comes to masters and PhD because there is no tuition fee so you should bear that in mind but I must tell you that you wouldn't be able to get an admission if you don't have German proficiency so that is a twist which you should remember while choosing Germany as an option for higher studies now let us come to the most used and the most uh, uh, taken up option when it comes to going abroad for higher studies which is the GRE or the graduate record exam so uh, as you saw that if you want to go through gate then you you can only go to Singapore or Germany and uh, if you take the GRE and not the gate exam then you can go to USA, you can go to Canada, you can go to Germany, you can go to Singapore, you can go to France and the whole world is open to you if you take this exam. And yes, the universities which take, which take the GATE score as a criteria, they also take the GRE score as a criteria. So uh, the universities like uh, NUS, NTU, TU, Munich and RWTH Aachen, they can also give you an admission if you want to apply using the GRE score and not the GATE score but the universities which only take GRE would not take the GATE score as an admission criteria okay so the whole world is open to you if you go by this option the GRE exam 
now when it comes to the cost effectiveness of this thing then if you go, if you want to go to Singapore, suppose uh, for your masters using the Gate score, then obviously you can go there. But the cost which you would incur in Singapore would be similar to the cost which which you would incur in USA or Australia or uh, suppose in Canada. The cost in Canada uh, especially would be somewhat low than Singapore and USA. So there is no such difference as to uh, like if you go via GRE then you would have to pay more. No, that is not the scenario. You would have to pay an equal, somewhat equal amount or comparable amount whether you go via gate or you go via GRE. But the only exception would be Germany. Germany would be the cheapest option by using both the pathways. Whether you go through gate or through GRE, Germany would be the cheapest option so there is there will be no difference in cost of education when it comes to these pathways the cost of education would be same if you take GRE or you take the gate exam okay so let us see what are the requirements if you give the GRE exam so you would obviously you would have to give the GRE exam you would have to score more than 315 or 312 because a score of less than 312 is not considered a good score so if you want to get a good admit in uh, some very reputed university then you have to score more than 312 at least because the GRE exam is of 340 marks I'm going to discuss about this exam now and in the future videos I'll be exploring more all the universities which are there in US Canada Europe which accept GRE and I'm going to talk about the GRE and TOEFL exams in detail like I talked about the admission process through gate I'm going to do the same thing for GRE so please uh, watch our next uh, all the future videos if you want to use this option so let us continue what are the requirements if you want to go with the GRE exam so uh, the GRE exam is of 340 marks uh, 170 English 170 quant and uh, uh, six marks is for the essays which you have to write so a score of 300 Three, uh, more than 312 is considered uh, a good score so you have to try to aim uh, above that score and you would have to give either TOEFL or IELTS now this th these exams TOEFL or IELTS uh, show your English proficiency in communication and uh, uh, you would need to require uh, you would be required to give just one of these depending on the country suppose if you want to Canada or UK then you would have to give IELTS but if you want to go to Germany or USA or Singapore then you would uh, want to give TOEFL so these are country dependent preferences based on a trend which has been followed so uh, if, if someone wants to go to UK or Canada then generally they give IELTS and if someone wants to go to USA Germany or Singapore then they give TOEFL. So th that is the trend which is followed then uh, you would require an SOP uh, that is common for every application process you would initiate in any university then you would require letter of recommendations and your CV should be good. So these are the requirements which you would uh, have to fulfill if you want to go uh, using the GRE option and there are some common requirements uh, for the both these pathways first is the funding so as I have already discussed that cost of education will be same if you use any of these options that won't be different so it is not like that if you go via gate then cost will be less the cost will be same and uh, you would have to bear the expense of the education in a similar manner if you whether you choose GRE or you choose, choose gate as an option to study abroad okay then you would require your visa then you would need to shortlist the universities in which you want to apply now the process of shortlisting the universities would be better and more advantageous if you choose the GRE because you would have lot of options in your palette but if you choose the gate exam then you would only have four options two universities in Germany and two universities in Singapore that's all those are the options which you would have okay and you would the common requirement is TOEFL as well as IELTS because uh, th that is something which you cannot get around whether you go via gate or you go via GRE you would have to give either TOEFL or IELTS 
and then you would have to develop a research interest that is why i told you in all those videos uh, which came earlier uh, in 2019 in the months of november and december i told about all the research which is going on in technical university munich and in national university singapore that is because to develop your research interest because that is all which matters when you want to go for an ms or a phd okay and sop lor and cv are the common requirements so this was an overview of the pathways which you can take if you want to study abroad for your higher education so there are two pathways gate and gre gre gives you more options on your table more options for location more options for universities and gate would only give you just four options only in two countries so that is about uh, the overview of going abroad for an ms in future videos i am going to discuss in detail about the gre option and the universities which accept gre and what all research and funding you would require in order to go to those universities and the scholarships uh, which will be available in those universities so this is all for this video thank you for listening and uh, yeah please if you want to know about uh, going abroad for higher education please watch our future videos subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon thank you